This is the legendary route of Marco Polo, land of Buddhist caves and lost cities. The Silk Road province of Xinjiang, a tourist paradise of fertile oasis towns, traditional bazaars, and forbidding deserts. A land of brilliant light and color. And, unknown to the growing number of foreign tourists, home of China's massive nuclear test program. Over the past four decades, the Chinese have exploded more than 40 nuclear bombs at their desert test site, circled by the Silk Road towns. Some of the bombs were 300 times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb. The devastating effects on a local population have never been revealed. This summer, dispatches traveled to China's western frontier. We were there to uncover the truth about the unknown victims of the Chinese nuclear test program. Getting the evidence to tell the story would require a high-risk undercover operation. China is an oppressive one-party state. Freedom of movement is highly restricted. Foreign journalists are banned from the province of Xinjiang. So we would have to pretend to be tourists while we carried out our investigation. We knew we'd need someone with inside local knowledge. In Istanbul, we contacted a senior cancer doctor from Xinjiang. Dr. Anwar Tokti told us he'd seen an alarming increase of cancer patients and deformities in children. He agreed to return to China to help us meet the victims and obtain confidential medical documents. I'll go with you and try to obtain this material, but you have to be aware that the police will be following us the whole time. It's very risky. They'll watch our every move. It's the first day of our journey. The towns we're going to visit are part of any tourist's itinerary. Many of them are only 200 miles from the Chinese nuclear test site. We knew that when we met victims, we would need a qualified doctor to examine them. Dr. Laura Watson has worked in a number of British hospitals and she's also practiced abroad, investigating the health problems of children in Africa. I'd always wanted to travel the Silk Road as a tourist, so when I heard it was a nuclear test zone, I was astonished. There's very little information about it. Radioactivity is known to cause cancers and birth defects. I'm very keen to investigate the extent of any health effects on the local people. In a town close to the nuclear test zone, we met up with Anwar. For the next six weeks, as far as the Chinese authorities are concerned, we're just another group of British travelers visiting the ancient sites and other attractions. So as not to arouse suspicion, Anwar pretends to be our tourist guide. Whenever possible, Anwar takes us off the tourist trail and down the back streets. Here in the traditional villages circling the nuclear test site, Anwar is determined to take us to meet people he believes are the victims of nuclear tests. For the villagers in this area, access to medicine is severely limited. When word goes out that Dr. Laura and Dr. Anwar are available to be seen, they're overwhelmed by the response. We can't tell the villagers we are researching the effects of the nuclear tests. This young man, now 18, has been unable to walk since the age of six. He has a chronic muscle wasting disease. One day in November, he was playing with other children and it started to get very frosty. He fell down on the ice and broke his leg. 
It was broken from here. We took him to the doctor and they bandaged his leg up like this. Since then, he's been able to walk, but only with difficulty. He's got very increased tone in his legs. And because he's never used them, his feet are turning in. It's comfortable like that. Okay. It sounds as though it was a problem that he was born with, that his legs weren't normal when he was born. And then, although he, he was able to walk initially, he developed degenerative problems from then on. It appears to be a form of congenital degenerative disorder, but without further tests, I can't say exactly what. Among the patients, we see a surprisingly large number of birth defects. This young woman has not developed mentally and has never been able to walk properly. Laura asked her mother about her early history. And she was learning to talk normally as well. She couldn't speak at all. She still hasn't looked properly. She was slow. But now she can say mum, dad, brother, sister. Can she stand up? She take her own weight on her feet. Stand up. Come on, darling, stand up. Stay still. Let your hands relax. You take a few steps. Very unsteady. I think physically, she looks healthy, she looks happy, she looks well cared for. Um, I don't think there's anything else that we could do in the West that you're not doing here. That you're doing everything right. It's something she's born with and something that she's going to have to live with. <laughs> Within a short time, we see several different types of congenital disorder, but we need to investigate the possible causes. The next girl we see is 17. Her symptoms suggest a crippling bone disease. This one was born in the hospital. At the time, nothing seemed seriously wrong. Then she started to twist herself backwards. We thought she needed ointment, so we gave her some. We often took her to the doctors. He told us it was caused by calcium deficiency. And what's happened to the progression of her illness since then? Two years ago, she started to twist herself backwards again. Her bones started to crack. Her ankle had been broken since last winter. Somehow, when her nerves pull, the bone is pulled with it. Look at her. There's no flesh left on her legs. Firstly, I think it's very unlikely that her problems are due to calcium deficiency as such. It sounds much more likely that it's something she was born with and that it's a degenerative disorder. We spent the winter in tears because of her. We didn't know what was the cause of her terrible pain until we discovered that one of her ankle bones had come out at one side. 